How's it going everybody? I'm Driftwood. Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. This is an RPG Maker MV tutorial and I got a really cool question the other day. Uh, this is from Eddie Waltz Gaming and he says, I have a question. I'm trying to make a random NPC generator that randomizes the image, randomizes what the text says, and what, you know, you input what it's going to say, and have random movement speed and random movement frequencies. I could not figure this out and if anyone could help me that'd be great. So at first I thought, oh man, you add so many layers of random, you have to add an, more complexity, more complexity. And at first I glanced over this question. I'm gonna be, and, and I do that sometimes. I'm like, you know what? That's gonna be a lot of work for a little payoff, and I don't, I don't think it's gonna be something I want to try. But then I started doing something else, and then I thought about it in my head, and I was like, you know what? We don't have to make it uh, that complex. It could have complexity, but we can make it a simple event. So I started messing with it. And I came across a lot of pitfalls, but I found a very simple method to make it work. And uh, I thought, well, why not? This is a cool little method. It's going to add a ton of variance to your maps where your, your NPCs are right. And okay, you won't notice too much right here. You know, this guy, you just see three NPCs and you don't think anything special. But what I'm going to do is reload the game. And let's reload the game and we're going to see that those three NPCs are now three different NPCs that move at different speeds, different frequencies. They say, you know, different things. Well, they have only five dialogue boxes that they could speak from and they could pick random ones. But, you know, they also have, uh, I went a step further and I was like, well, why not we, why don't we add blend mode? Why don't we add opacity? I eventually took out blend mode because it made most of the NPCs look like, like shadows. You couldn't really see the detail on them. And I made the opacity only go from 255 to 200 because like, once again, they become like invisible and you can't see, but you can add that in and I'll show you how. So I, I prefer using uh, the opacity only 255 to 200 or not using it and not using blend mode at all or maybe only using one of the blend modes because every, every new randomized thing you put in is another thing you have to kind of control. So basically I'll show you one more time. We'll restart this game and you'll see that these three, you can look at the events right here. They're not really NPCs. They're like, you know, well, you know, I guess they are NPCs, but they're, they're being randomized from a pool of eight characters and the, the thing is you can have it randomized from as many things as you want but keep in mind every time you add a layer of randomness you have to design and and like basically make every possible outcome so even though this is not a complex system it's a very simple system it's still going to require a little bit of eventing and a little bit of work because you have to you basically have to set up every possible outcome but the way i set it up is you don't have to design it every possible outcome for every uh basically it's not as complex as it may sound you could you know with with eight different things that five different things they can say eight different characters uh, you know three different blend modes five of this five of that you don't have to multiply those numbers i found a way to make it so that you only have to put one thing at a time so let's look at the events now in game and you'll see how i went about creating this random npc generator so the generator right here is actually an invisible event we're going to be using a controller event i tried to do this with a common event but the problem was every NPC would need their own variables. Um, so doing it this way, uh, oh, and I also tried another way by making it turn pages. But the problem is every time you set their image and the movements and the frequency and everything and the, you know, the action, all, every time you switch page, all of that stuff is lost and it's reset to whatever the new page was. So the random NPCs have to be uh, basically one page. That's why you use a controller event and a move route events to control what, what happens on those. So. On the NPCs themselves, we'll start with them. All you're going to do uh, is create a new variable. We're going to have, I think, five or six variables depending on how many different random things you want. But the, the, the beautiful thing is you only need one variable to control all of your NPCs. So one dialogue uh, variable will control all the dialogue for all your NPCs. So pretty simple, actually. Um, you know, I was first I thought, okay, well, we might have to put in uh, Yanfly's self, uh, self switches, uh, the plugin, and Yanfly's self variables, right? And I thought, okay, well, we'll all do a double tutorial and like teach that. But no, you don't even have to do that. So basically, you just control a variable in your inside your NPC, give it whatever image or no image, because we're going to switch it out with our controller of it. So control variables, pick whatever one you want, call it RNG NPC dialogue. And we just want to name it so that it has a sort of, sort of convention. And when we look back and we call these variables, it's easier to reference what this one's for. This is going to control our dialogue. So we're going to stick, pick that one. Now, you set this to a random number by operation set. And you select operand of random one to the number of things you want them to say. You can have them say as many different things as you want. So you can have it 100 things if you want. Just pick the number of one to however many things. But remember, every time you add another number, you have to 
put what's, you know, you have to type in the dialogue. So you can have a, a super complex system. I mean, it's not complex. It's you could have a super big event list with, you know, it's still very simple complexity here. Um, then you do a conditional branch. So you insert a new conditional branch and then you select the variable NP, RNG NPC dialogue and set it equal to, make sure this is set to equal to a constant of one and then no else branch at all is required. Then inside there, you show your text, what you want it to say. I'm using Galv's layer messaging, or uh, uh, one of Galv's plugins, the, the message pop-up, layer message pop-up. Ah, why do you do this to me, brain? Galv, uh, it, it really doesn't matter. You don't need the message styles. I just wanted to make sure if you guys saw something, you wanted to replicate it, you can. Galv message styles is what I'm using. And with that plugin, a simple uh, command that we do is slash pop, you know, forward slash pop, and then bracket zero. It'll make this events dialog show up in a little box so you see it didn't like show a text box all the way across the screen in the middle of the top. It just showed a little tiny box for it to fit their dialog. So um, make sure that the, the window, uh, the background is set to window if you want that to work like that. So that's all you do. You right click, you copy that, okay? Then you paste it right underneath it. You edit, you change the one to a two, still no else handler ever needed. And then you, you just change the dialogue to say what you want it to say in the second one. In, in the, I, you know, I'm super creative. So this is dialogue box one, two, three, four, and so forth. But you'll have it like, oh, I heard a rumor monsters are coming back. You know, I see it in every game, those stupid tropes. But anyway, you, you just design, that's the whole event right there. This needs to be trigger action button. I've put the stepping uh, just to see how fast their movements and their, their speed and their frequency is. But you don't actually need it stepping, but you will need walking. Uh, you want the priority same as characters. It might be set to below characters if you're selecting... Um, what do you call it? If, you're, if there's no image, it'll go default to below characters. So if you have no image, which you can do, you just make sure that you set this to same as characters. That way the player doesn't actually sp spawn on top of them and then lock up the player. So set it to same characters, it'll stop the player from being able to walk into them and the mo NPC spawning on where the, where the player's standing. Um, make sure you set the type movement to random. And it doesn't matter the speed or the frequency because we're going to change that. Also, doesn't matter the image because we're going to change that as well. But we control the variable and select uh, uh, random conditions for uh, if it's one, two, three, four, five, six, a thousand, whatever you want. And then you put all of the the text, the you know outcomes. You have to design every possible outcome. So that's it, right? Um, and we probably want to name this because you're going to need to do this for every NPC. You're going to go RNG underscore NPC one. Now. Um, so we'll look at the second one. It's exactly the same thing, but if you want to change up their dialogue, you can have them say different things. You know, you can you can take what one NPC NPC would say here. You know, cut, and then you can have him say it here, and we'll cut this right there. Boom, boom. Just so it mixes it up more. It, it really doesn't matter because it's still going to be. You still have the same chance from three to one, so it, it'll still be the same chance. It'll be. Uh, uh, there's there's a couple ways I try to figure out dialogue, and this seems to be like the best way. So they may say multiple things, um, but you can actually control this on the controller event to make so that they will say only one thing as well. So all you do have to do to make that happen is you take the control variable off of this and you move it to the controller event, and then you make sure that all your NPCs don't have the same dialogue and the same number. Otherwise, they will all say the same thing all the time. So, um, like, they'll all say that all oh, the monsters are coming back. Uh, you know, when dialog box one pops up, they'll all say this is one. But you can still make that work if you change this dialog to two and you offset them. So when one says dialog box one uh, for one, the, then this one will say this is dialog box three when the variable is three. So there's multiple ways you can do this. Um, I recommend this way because then you can get multiple, multiple times you can talk to them and get different stuff from them. And if you have a lot of uh, text, then, you know, you can see a lot of different extra tips and the player wants to sit there and talk to your NPCs, good. You're keeping the player engaged in the game. So that's a good way to do it. Anyway, that's the easy part. The hard part, let me rephrase that. That's not hard. The, the longer part, okay? I put a comment to separate the NPCs. Your controller event needs to be an auto run. This is going to be below characters or above characters. Um, just make sure that this event is where the, pl the player is not going to be able to get to because it doesn't need to. It's just an auto run event and it, at the end of it. So start off by doing a comment and say RNG NPC1 because we're going to separate this and then do um, an erase event at the bottom. So because we're going to put this erase event at the bottom because that's going to be necessary. We set the priority of, uh, below or above characters. Trigger will be auto run. None of the other stuff matters. Okay. Um, matter of fact, you don't want to give this one an image. Now we're going to set up our variables. So we're going to create a one, two, three, four, five more variables, total of six variables for an unlimited number of random NPCs. Not that bad. Um, so 
the first thing you do is control variables and we're going to create a variable for RNG NPC image. This is going to change what the enemy looks like, right? And we set it to a random val value between one and the number of different images you want. Now, obviously, you're probably going to put more than eight. So after that, we're going to do RNG NPC speed. This is going to control the, the number of, uh, this is going to control how fast your characters moves. And you can see how many possible speeds you have right here. So you can have anywhere from one up to six. It wouldn't make sense to do more than six. So right here, this will be one to six if you want them to be able to go from eight times slower all the way up to four times faster. Um, you might want to limit that so that they can't go eight times slower because they look they move super slow. And you might want to take off four X faster because they move so fast you can't even interact with them. So you might want to go one, two, three, four. You might want to go one to four and just pick uh, this one, this one, this one, and this one. For this instance, I've made them all available just for the sake of showing the tutorial. But like I said, recommended you go one, two, three, four, random number between one to four, and you select this for one, this for two, this for three, this for four. After speed, we have frequency. We can look at how many outcomes we have for frequency. We have a total frequency of five. I don't see why you wouldn't want to have all five frequencies. They will look like their hands when they're stepping going super slow in place. So you might want to get rid of lowest or highest. You can go one to three to, to bring it down on the number of things you have to do. Or you can go one to five to have them all included. So random number, you do the same thing for RNG and PC frequency. Set random number one to five. And then we're going to have opacity. This is optional. If you, opacity basically means the see-throughness of them. A 255 opacity in um, an RPG Maker MV means they are completely visible. They're solid. In, in uh, Game Maker Studio 2, this is a, an opacity of 1. And uh, an opacity of 0 is the same in both. They're, 0 means completely invisible. So you would definitely not want... Uh, a, zero opacity. You could have as many different uh, numbers of opacity as you want. Well, up to 255 would make sense, but that's way too many, and you honestly don't need that. You're going to, if you do include opacity, I recommend going with probably 255 so that they're completely visible, and then maybe um, 225 is what I picked for the third one, and then 200, because you'll they'll still look kind of see-through, and if you want to make them look kind of like a ghost, then 150 looks pretty decent, so you can maybe do random uh, value 1 to 4 or 1 to 3. Once again, you don't even need opacity if you don't want any of your enemies to look like see-through or ghosts. Then the next thing is we're also going to set the dialog. We've already made this variable. We're controlling it here as well as on the event itself just to uh, further randomize it. So, you know, just set this to the random number between one and the number of possible uh, variables that it can have. Now, you can take that off of that event. Like I said, you can either put this on the random uh, controller or on the NPCs themselves. So if you if you put it on the controller, then you need to make sure that all of your NPCs have the same number of things they say, even if they say different things or in different places. Um, if you put it on the NPC, then NPCs can have different numbers of things that they can say. So two different ways to go about it. Either way works fine. Um, so anyway, I put it on both to show you it can go on either. Now, the next thing we're going to do is the same thing. So it's not a complex system. It's just quite a bit of eventing for every NPC. Because like I said, you have to design every possible outcome. But the way that it's set up, you don't have to do an, an outcome for if it picks image 1 and speed 2. That's not its own unique outcome. You're doing things one at a time. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, event and see how we do it. So in the first thing, all of this is going to say, follow the same structure. So once you understand this basic concept, it's going to be pretty easy to, to continue. Basically, we're going to control a variable, and we're going to select RNG NPC image, set it to 1, no else handler. And inside here, this is the trick. So you go into move route. So we go right here, we right click inside new. We're going to go to tab 2, and on set move route, you're going to see that we've got some special commands. We've got lots of stuff you can actually do. It's important. Uh, make sure you check the box that says skip if cannot move. Otherwise, you might, in some situations, lock up your game because you're trying to move a solid object into another solid object, and that will crash the game. So just for safety, most of the time when you do move events, you want to skip if cannot move unless it's very carefully choreographed. So just check that as a, it should be default, honestly. Anyway. Uh, inside here, we're doing the movement route, right? So, uh, so we're not actually moving anything, though. So what we're doing is we're setting the actor's image. So inside here, you can see that we've got the option for change image, So, which is super cool. So what we want to do is since we're selecting that this is all controlling the first NPC 1, we make sure we go to the top and we select RNG NPC 1. Then we go change image. 
and then we select what the first image and I just went here one two three four five six seven eight but like I said you can have as many different images as you want so you can say 1 to 16 and then this will be 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 you're 24 you know and so forth and so on as many different random uh, images as you possibly have but we're just going to select one and this first outcome because we're seeing if it rolls this number then it gets this one so that's change image boom so what you do once you've got that you just right click it and you copy it you paste it right underneath it we right click this one and we just use our middle mouse button to scroll from one to two no else handler so we're just turning the RNG NPC image uh, to see if that number rolls to number two. If it does, you select a uh, movement route. You just edit this one, and you edit this one. So you don't even have to click. You're just editing now. It should already have skip. It cannot move because you just copy-pasted it. Now you go from here, and you click on the second one. Boom. Easy peasy. And you say, okay, make sure it's still on that. So if you, you want to make sure the first one's set up right. So every time you copy-paste, all of your stuff is already set up as default. Then you copy this one, you paste it underneath, and oh, you see the pattern now, right? We're just changing this from a 2 in the case of 3. We edit this one, we, may, we right, right click this, edit that, change this from 2 to 3. Pretty simple, right? Now you're going to repeat this process for every possible uh, number of image you want. So that's it for images. Once we get done with images, we're going to do the same thing. We can copy this one as well and paste it right here. But this time, we're going to change the uh, RNG image to RNG NPC speed. That's our second one. So we set that to a constant of 1. No else handlers needed. Then we're going to say, this is also in move route. We're no longer going to use image, but we're going to click on this button right here, change speed. So we make sure that it's still RNG NPC 1, and we click change speed. And inside change speed, you can select, you know, I just went one for one, one, two for two, three for three, all of them. But like I said, if you limit this so that you only go 4x slower to 2x faster, which is probably a better way to go about this, then you would just go one is this one, two would be this one, and so forth and so on. And then you, you copy this, paste that. Now you don't have to change anything besides change the one to a two and change this one from from uh, from this one to scroll down and you change that from a 1 to a 2 and so forth you do the same thing for however many different instances of speed you want I guess you can see the pattern here not very complex at all is it it's just a lot of little things that add up to make a long event so then we do the frequency so you do the same thing you change your uh, RNG NPC uh, variable to frequency set that equal to one Noel Sandler and inside here the button for frequency is right underneath it so you change out you know delete the speed one and change this to frequency and the same thing will go one for lowest and you just go in the case of two it's gonna be lower in the case of three higher and so forth and so on the whole time you want to you know skip if cannot move you do the same thing for all the frequencies opacity is optional so you would you know change the variable to, to look for a different variable RNG NPC opacity in the case of one we can see that opacity is right here and 255 is completely visible and zero is completely invisible so you just select whatever number you want for the first one then you can um, you could even, an idea I just had, you can have multiples that would give 255. So like, say you have 10 variables uh, and 90% of the time they'll have full opacity, but then that 10th time it'll be 200. So every, you know, 10% chance that the NPC is a ghost NPC. So you could do that as well. Um, I just made it very simple, three possible outcomes. It's either um, fully visible, slightly see-through, or a little bit more see-through, but still mostly solid. Um, and this is just to show technically you can change opacity. Also, you can do another one for um, blend mode. But with blend mode, um, this is another thing you would add. Control variables, RNG NPC blend equals random one to four since there's four blend modes. And inside that, you would basically just go blend mode. Now, you're not going to put this in a common event. This would be right underneath it inside your controller event. But I'm not putting it in my game because I don't really think it looks that good. But you can add more randomness if you want to have like shadows, you know. Use opacity and blend mode and they look like shadows. And it looks really cool if that's the effect you're going for. But it really takes away a lot of the detail. And they sort of kind of all look the same when they have a certain blend mode. So the first one would be blend mode which you see right here and there's four possible blend modes normal additive multiply and screen and the only ones that really kind of look good are normal and additive uh, I, I think that's yeah because multiply and screen they sort of look like ghosts 
Uh, additive looks like a glowy kind of effect, so they look kind of like more radiant or celestial or something, you know? So you could maybe add blend mode and just do normal additive or add them all. It's up to you. It's just uh, what you want to add to it. And you would do the same thing. You would just change the, NP the, the value of the variable or you would change the condition to check a different variable. So now it's checking this variable blend. If it's one, then make it the blend mode of normal. This whole time, it's important that you're, you're make that, uh, because it's different in that common event, it says this event, but inside of your variable, uh, inside of your controller event right here, this whole time, the top thing has got to be set up for uh, NPC one, because this is all for the first instance of the NPC. Once you've got all of them, uh, you got frequencies, you know, speed, opacity, blend mode, and it comes to an end. Now you've got all that, and you set it all up for the first one. Now what you do is you go to the top, and you copy the whole event that you just made. And the whole event that you just made will be right there. So you right click the whole thing and you, you paste it right underneath. And then you just start changing things. What would you have to change? Well, you might want to change the comment. So now we're saying, now we're checking for all instances of the second random NPC. And we've already set it up, so there's not really much thinking. It's just sort of like a little bit of monotonous of uh, programming or, or eventing, you know. There's actually no real programming, it's just eventing. But programming works the same way as eventing, really. You're setting up a structure, you're setting conditions, and you're, you're saying play it out. So if you understand the concept of how this works, then you basically understand so on some level programming. You just don't understand all the syntax of programming. So anyway, um, RNG NPC 2, we're going to keep this the random. Uh, we have to re-roll them, otherwise all your NPCs will look the same. So we're just doing the same thing just by calling the control variable again. It's re-rolling it and giving you a different possible outcome right there. So then we're going to change all the instances. Everything stays the same, but we change one thing. All of the move routes, we edit and we change from NPC 1 to NPC 2. We hit OK. That's it. That's really, that's all there is to it. We go here to the next one, NPC 1 to NPC 2. Boom. You do that for all of them. That's it. Very, very simple. Once you set up the first time, you just change all the NPC 1 checks to NPC 2 checks. Boom. Copy paste the whole thing again. Reroll all the same numbers. Everything's the same. You edit this. You copy paste 2 to, to 3. But make sure when you, when you set up your event here, you name them all correctly because it'll help you later on. So I'm saying this is the NPC 1. And then on the second one, even though it's exactly the same thing, I'm going to say this is RNG NPC 2, and so forth and so on. This is RNG NPC 3. And then you just set up these events. Now you just copy-paste this event, boom, somewhere else. And you can basically copy-paste the, the whole event that you made for the first set. Copy-paste that. Boom, let's make another one really quick. Oh, at, make sure I said at the beginning, because in case I forgot, you want to do this uh, as an auto run and it has to have an erase event that way um, once you've set up these NPCs the like this won't freeze up the game so because it erases it if you leave the map and you come back the NPCs will turn into other things so you can have NPCs on the map you leave the map and come back those NPCs are now all different again which is cool, but if you don't want that, you can self-switch this A. You might have to use a Yanfly plugin to remember your events, pages, and locations, and settings um, to set that up right. Uh, I kind of like it being random. Since we're going random, let's go all out with random, right? It's, it's, it's basically different every time because you, you walk into town at one point in time. You have different people there. If you leave and come back five hours later, you're not going to see the same people there, are you? Probably not. You're going to see different people there, so that's how it would kind of work. But anyway, underneath, or above the erase event, I would paste all of that stuff again. And now this would not be NPC2. We would actually have this for NPC4. Boom. And I want to rename this one to NPC4. Inside here, we go scrolling down. That's two. That's, oh, hold up. That was one, two. That's why we put a little comment because it's green and it sticks out. That was three. And we come down here. Now here's not one. We're going to edit this. So that's looking for four. Now, how quick is it to make a new NPC? Let's see. Well, we go from one to four or three to four, whatever it's currently at. Boom. Edit this to four. Now, this is another thing to keep in mind. Uh, it's not very complex, right? Pretty simple. But it's not easy when you decide to do random things because when you decide to do random things, you have to account for every possible outcome. So that's the number of things. The more uh, the more things you want to have it possibly say, the more times you have to go through and monotonously change 
your move event but the way we set it up we made everything pretty simple to do you you don't really like i could still have a conversation while i'm doing this because it's not requiring a lot of brain power to do this once you've already set it up you kind of go through and you change every possible outcome just like that so that it, it randomizes the fourth instance of that ver of that uh all of the the npc things as well so we're setting up all of the speeds now for the fourth npc we're changing the frequencies now. Now I put in like every possible speed thing, which you shouldn't. And by getting rid of the slowest and the quickest one, you're going to make this a little bit easier because every NPC has two less uh, RNG things that you have to change, you know, and deal with for every NPC. As well as frequency, you can cut out two of the frequencies. You can cut out opacity, so you can really make this um, with much less stuff in it. Did I just, uh, I messed up, didn't I? <laughs> or did I copy paste it twice? Boom. This is for NPC 1. I think I just copy pasted it twice. I did. So anyway, yeah, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and I put another one. So I have the the set, I have it set up for you know a fifth NPC. So this would be NPC five, which we're not going to go through and do because you saw how I did it. But if I wanted to, I'd copy paste this, change that name, and go through and edit all these to to look for NPC five. And that's would be it. But we're not going to do that for a fifth one. We're just going to keep it like that because I think this has gone on long enough. We'll delete all the things for four, uh, for the second version of four or the second copy of 4, which would be 5. Now we've got 4 NPCs right here that will be randomly if I didn't screw it up, which I think it should be fine. And by using the controller events, we don't have to switch pages. So now we've got 4 different, you know, we can only have, a, we're, we, I only picked a pool of 8 different characters, so you might have duplicates in there. But if you add maybe like 30 different characters it could be, then you'll have even more variants. And they all have different speeds. They all have different opacities. They all have different frequencies. Look, he's running around like crazy. And they all say something different. Uh, well, you know, they all say something boring and bland. You know, dialogue box one, box two, box three. But basically, uh, I what was his name? Eddie Waltz Gaming. Thank you for the special request. I really uh, appreciate you watching my videos and interacting with the community here and asking me questions. This spurred on a great idea that I think some people might find pretty cool. If you did like this uh, tutorial, please smash that like button. Sorry, it went on a little bit long, um, it, you know, but uh, you could probably get the idea. I wanted to be thorough because a lot of things could possibly go wrong. Um, and there's a lot of things to, to look at. So anyway, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these tutorials, please say thank you to all the Patreon supporters. They're the ones who make these tutorials happen every week. Um, and if you would like to increase the frequency of those of these tutorials and get up to two a week, then you can always consider supporting me on Patreon. I'd really appreciate it if you did that. Thank you so much. Um, if you're not uh, subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. I've got lots of RPG Maker Envy tutorials, like hundreds. I've got Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials if you're interested in that sort of thing. You know, a little bit more on the programmer side, but still basic, simple eventing concept, you know. Um, yeah, um, that's basically it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.